So our next honoree is the remarkable Katherine Johnson. Johnson's work at NASA began before any person had ever left the Earth's atmosphere and continued through the age of the space shuttle. From a young age, she exhibited excellence in mathematics, and after graduating summa cum laude and starting a family, she became one of the most prized members of the mathematical analysis team at the National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, the precursor to NASA. Her skill at trajectory calculations was so admired that John Glenn insisted she double check the calculations for his famed Friendship 7 orbiter, uh, calculations that were performed on an IBM computer. Using a desktop mechanical calculator, Johnson confirmed the numbers from the computer. A after her confirmation, Glenn noted, if she says they're good, then I'm ready to go. Tonight, we honor Katherine Johnson and present a short summary of her contributions to computing. I couldn't wait to get to algebra and geometry. It was hard to do, but when you got it, you got it. You had to work for it. But whew, I'm not too sure, but I've always felt that maybe it was because there was a visible objective in mathematics. And you knew when you got there. And in some subjects, you didn't. The president of the college drove over to the school and said, West Virginia University has agreed to desegregate without trouble. If we send them three good students, then you are going to West Virginia U this summer. Because that was going to be quite an experience. First time to go to a white university. Going to be the only black woman there. It was not going to be easy, so my mom stayed with me that summer, and she and I had a merry time. NASA was hiring female mathematicians, and for the first time that, you know, this is a year or so, they had started hiring blacks. There was a group of white mathematicians, and just a year or so before, I don't know how many years, they had opened it up for blacks. So they were two separate groups? Two separate groups. But doing basically the doing same Doing the work. same work, right. Did that seem like a strange arrangement to you? No, to me it was... I was finally going to find out what a research mathematician did. John Glenn was to be the first astronaut to go up into the atmosphere and come back. And they wanted him to come back in a special place. And that was what I did. I, I computed his trajectory. And uh, from then on, any time they were going to compute trajectories, they were given mostly, all of them to my branch. And I did most of the work on those by hand. But when he got ready to go up, he said, call her. <laughs> and if she says the computer's right, I'll take it. We were just lucky that, that we never had a problem with anything that we, we, were, we were really concerned about. Really concerned. Everybody, when they went to the moon the first time, everybody was concerned about them, them getting there. We were concerned about him getting back because it's, you know, if you miss your plane, then you may not get another plane for six hours, right? But if he missed that orbiting vehicle, he missed it more than X number of degrees, more than X feet per second, he was done for. No way he could get back. You've got to learn this early that you are as good as anybody else, but you know better than any of these people. So conduct yourselves accordingly.
The 2019 Computer History Museum Fellow Award is presented to Katherine Johnson for her exceptional calculations during the US space programs that brought the first humans to the moon. Due to the recent passing of her husband, Katherine could not be with us tonight. But here to accept the award on her behalf is her close friend, space medicine researcher and NASA astronaut, Dr. Yvonne Cagle. Welcome, please join me in welcoming Dr. Yvonne. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. And now you know why Dr. Katherine Johnson is my hero, my heroine. It's not just because of launching to the moon, but of getting us back home. <laughs> no pressure. I mean, what kind of pressure it is to follow this? I mean, there's really, I, that talk about pressure. But actually, there's no pressure, because this is space, and this is what we do. Good evening. I'm Dr. Yvonne Cagle, NASA astronaut, and it is my distinct privilege to recognize, speak, and receive on behalf of Dr. Katherine Coleman Goebel Johnson. Now, you may not actually recognize me tonight as the same. I think we have a picture of what you see here. This is actually me at the Oscars, the hidden figure by choice behind the hidden figure. And I can assure you that tonight, Dr. Katherine Johnson is just as delighted as she was on the world stage amongst you here, her peers in a different category. So thank you again for your presence and the opportunity to speak on her behalf. Now, I first met Dr. Katherine Johnson in 1997. However, her lifelong legacy has inspired me long before that year, long before that year. And that's because hers is a legacy that stays with you all of your life. So with Dr. Katherine Johnson, it would take more than a lifetime to give back to her in any way that would even begin to be calculated to approximate even the equivalent degree of inspiration. Now, with all of that math speak aside, <laughs> what that means is that the only thing that I can do, and what I continue to strive to do each and every day, is to pay it forward to our next generation of future explorers. Yet what do you say about someone who has given so much of their 100 years gracing this planet while granting the next by way of sticking the landing a century divided in half, half a century ago of our own giant lunar leap by way of her enabling pristine calculations of those early space flight trajectories. What, what do you say about someone with such an intrepid spirit who continuously, courageously, throughout the course of her legendary 100 years, to tirelessly and, yes, even cognitively, champion and persevere against all odds against those who persevere against the odds. What do you say? What do you say? Oh, well, you don't say anything. You listen. 
So tonight and every night, let us listen to that voice hidden no more in the words of Dr. Katherine Goble, Dr. Katherine Coleman Goble Johnson. And I quote, thank you for this extraordinary honor. I've gone from being a computer in a skirt to an advocate for women and girls in science. This has been the greatest honor of my life. The magic about tonight is that you are recognizing the men and women across computing history and giving them a voice. You are providing a platform for so many to share their story, and together we are rewriting history in a way that allows everyone to see their place, backward and forward. I am proud to be able to share my story tonight." End quote. Ad Astra to the stars for that voice, Dr. Katherine Coleman Goble Johnson, hidden no more. Thank you.